All right, gang, back here with Clipflow. Today we're gonna tidy up this disaster of a page here so that it actually looks like something special and it will look like this. So we're gonna go and style it in, make it look all good using our components. So we're gonna use our form field components that we created last time and our button components. And then we're gonna go and submit that to the controller, get that user created. And at the same time, I'm gonna walk through setting up an organization generator for slugs. So what we wanna make sure is there's no collision. So if you choose a team name and then we par parameterize that and it, and it matches something else in the DB, we're gonna automatically append a little token to that so that it is unique. And we're gonna show you how to do a loop. So that's cool. And then inside here is with the user, I'm also gonna set up the default organization ID setter. So that allows us to say user.default organization ID is X. And then what we'll do is run through all the organization joins, make sure none of those are default, and then we'll set only the one to being default. And then we're also gonna add a getter over here. So a few little pieces, but that's all gonna allow us to get to our end game of creating a user as well as the organization. So let's jump in. All right, so first up, let's have a look at how this flow works. So it's gonna hit the registrations controller. And then it's, so the first thing is the new view. So this will be this. So let's just have a quick look. So if we jump to views, registrations new here, and we just go sign ups. So you can see, so that's editing that view there. All right, so that's all cool. What I think we want to probably do as well is for this, we want to have a different layout because we don't really want to show any of the app Chrome when we're in this state. It doesn't really make sense. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into views, go into layouts, and then I'm gonna create a new file here. I'm gonna go so onboarding, right? We're gonna create an onboarding one. I'm gonna just grab this application HTML, all right? Now, so stream mode is not important in this at all because we're not streaming while we're onboarding. And we also don't have the, need this group here because we're using that. We don't need the dark mode. To I will leave the dark mode toggle because that'll help us um, do any dev we need to do. We will use the font awesome stuff. Um, and we don't need this nav, all right? So let's have a look at what that looks like. Before I do that, I need to actually render it into the right thing. So we jump into registrations, and then in the new, we want to re use the correct layout. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to add this layout onboarding to our registrations controller. So that's gonna override the default layout. Now, if we refresh that, you can see we're missing the sidebar and our main content doesn't go all the way across. So let's have a look at what's going on there. So inside of onboarding, we've got this here, we've got the min height screen, width full, margin left 16. All right, so we're gonna get rid of that. And now we've got full control. So what we wanna do in something like this is probably have a better looking sign up screen. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab the registrations new. So fix up this, sign up. And then let's just chuck this all inside of a div class. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna center this whole thing just for now. We can come back and make this all pretty later, but that's not the key functionality. I just want this to actually work so we can register in production. So we're gonna say margin auto, right? So we need to actually say M auto. Let's see if that works. That's not gonna work here. So let's just see center if we can Center self, we'll probably align, justify self, justify self center. Let's see if this will work. Probably need to have an explicit width on it as well. Let's just see what's being rendered. So yeah, so it's full width right now. So let's assign a width of, I don't know, width 16. Let's just make sure width full. To, to actually, to make this even simpler, I'm going to just go here in the onboarding and I'm gonna just say items center, and then I'm gonna say, just I think it's justify center. And then we do need this width of, not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I probably needs to be a flex. There we go, okay? So just had to set that to a flex box there. Let's set that width to 64. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what widths we can give it here to give it a bit more room. So realistically in mobile, we want 100%. And then let's go, so we're gonna say large is that. So large is W um, a third. And then normally what we're gonna say here is full. All right, so for small screens, we want that. But then for the big ones, we want 
a third, all right? So we sent it in the third. So that's going to do for now. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say BG. What are we going to do here? What color can we go for BG? Let's go have a look at what we've got. Background modal. Let's put in a modal. All right. There we go. And then we're going to just say text, 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 our favorite little one there. And that's going to be white in this instance. And we're going to say padding of eight. All right. And then we also want to round corners. So we're going to say border rate. It's round. Is it round? No, it's radius. Tailwind. Not so good at that yet. Border radius. Rounded. Rounded large. All right. Cool. Cool. So we kind of got something going on here. Still not the best at all in no way, shape or form, but we are getting there. So we can render, remember we've got our little helper here, so we can go, our component I should say. So that's gonna be render heading component dot new. And then this is gonna be, I think it's tag h1. All right, chuck that in there. And we also need the text is sign up. Uh, size and text, that's size, and text. there we go, sign up. Now we can get rid of this guy because we don't need him anymore, boom. All right, so we're making some headwind here, or we're making some room. Cut that, we're making some progress here. All right, so we wanna have, the first thing we wanna have is our team name or our organization name. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have this, and we're gonna say organization title. That's what we're going to use it here. And this is just a text field, right? And this is going to be value will be user dot organize. Uh, it'll be default organization dot title, right? That might not exist yet. So let's do that. Required true order. And this is organization. Okay. Um, we're not going to auto focus on email. We want to auto focus on organization. So user doesn't have a, a method default organization. So let's add that. So to add the default organization, we're actually going to have to add on the organization's users. We're going to have to add a is default, All right? So let's do that. Let's go here. We're going to go in this exit. We're going to go rails G migration, add default to organization users. Run that. Jump down here to DB, migrate down the bottom here. We're going to say add column to users. And it's going to call is default. It is a Boolean. And the default value is false, right? So whenever we create this, we don't always, every time we create a join, we don't want to just default it, okay? So do that. Now we're going to go Rails DB migrate, run that. I'm just going to restart the server. Now, this should have a new column. So we're going to go here, organizations, users. Let's just see, did that run? Rails DB migrate add to D organizations users is default. Why are you not showing here? Okay, that's odd. Okay, do you know why it's not working? Because I am being a bit of a noodle. We need to add it to organizations users, not user. So it's Rails DB rollback. It's great when your brain doesn't work. So here, not to users, it's organizations users. That's what we're doing. So I actually accidentally added it to the users column but I've just rolled it back so you can't see it. So you don't have to believe me. So we're gonna migrate again. Uh, organizations users is default. All right, so now let's go here. And we should technically also say it's null false, but it seems to set that there. It has set the default to false, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just, let's just do that to be safe. So we're gonna grab this null false and just add it to here. We don't want it to ever be null or nil. That makes a lot of pain. So we're gonna go, um, Rails DB, and this is gonna be, damn, what's the word? Let me think. So it's Rails DB, Rails DB migrate redo. So it reverted, and then it's added the null there for us, okay? So let's have a look. Nullable is false, okay, great. So that's gonna fix that little error for us. Now, what we need to do is we need to go into our models, and we're gonna to go to user, right? So we have has many organizations where admin, has many organizations where owner, has many organizations where user. But what we need is has one organization or has one default organization, all right? So let's try and do that. All right, so we can't use the has one, but what we can do here is define default organization here on the model. We can also define the setter. So we can say default organization ID equals, and then we're gonna pass in an organization ID, okay? So we're creating a setter on the here, on the user and a, a getter, okay? Now, what we wanna do here is, we wanna go user.transaction 
do. And the reason we want to use a transaction here is because we want to make sure that we update every single one of the, the records so that they're all default false. And then we want to update one record that is true. And we want to make sure all of those pass because you want to end up with uh, an, an example where you have two defaults because that's not what we're looking for here. Okay. So what we would do is we'd say user dot organizations dot update all dot and then we're going to say is default is false and we're going to set updated at to time dot zone dot now and the reason why we have to set this is because i think the update all from memory does not set the timestamp so we want to make sure we're doing that and then what we're going to say is user dot organizations dot where id is the organization id that we're passing in dot update all to is default true and update it at is time dot zone dot now. Okay, so we could we could do a find by here actually. We could probably do find by ID and then we can just say dot update and then we probably don't need this update at. So that, that will work as well. So let's give that a go and just see if that actually works. So we're going to go Rails C again. Jump in here. Now I'm gonna say user dot find to dot organizations. All right, so that's this one belongs to one team. All right. Now, if we have a look here in the DB organizations user, so this is correct. Default is not set. All right. So what we want to do now is let's see if we can say user dot find to dot update uh, default organization ID is one and hit that. So undefined method organizations. All right. So we can actually it says has many organizations. So that is odd. Okay, so this is the problem. This needs to be self, not user, because it doesn't know what it is. So it's self. So let's reload that. Okay, so what happened? Um, is default does not exist. So it's not on organizations. So it's organizations users. All right, so we actually have to do it that. Okay, reload. That makes sense. There we go. Okay, so we started transaction. We ended the transaction. And then we've updated all to is default false. And then we've updated the one to true. And now we can see that we have that there. Okay, so that's the setter. And that's important just because we don't, we wanna make sure we only ever end up with one. All right, because a user can have many organizations. So this would be equivalent to having UI where we can list all your organizations. You just have a button that says make default. And that will be the one that we will use when you sign in. So we've kind of setting ourselves up for the future here. Now. What is the default organization? So all we need to do is say go self dot organizations dot where. I mean, you know what we can do as well, just to be quicker here. We can just say organizations where default. This is going to return many. So all we're looking for here is default true, right? And then we're going to just return the first one because it should only ever be one. Okay, so that's the default. So let's reload that. Now, if we go load our user dot find two, and then we're going to say what's their default organization is Ken's team. Cool. All right. So we've set up default organizations, and all of that so that we can refresh this page and it doesn't crash. Because if you remember a few minutes ago when we had that open, when so if I just go back here and I say no thanks, Jeff, crash. Right. So we did all of that work so we could end up here, and that's what we want. Okay. So organization title. So really what I would call this is like team name, right? That's what we probably want to call it um, because that just makes probably more sense in this kind of context, all right? So you'll start off with your team name and for some reason, okay, it's all in white. So that's definitely not what we want. So what we'll use here, again, we'll use our little component because we've built this. So let's go look where we did it. So we did it in our ideas form, right? So we render these form fields. So let's grab that in the new and let's chuck it in here and see what happens. So we're going to go that and now we're going to pass in the form. Yep. And this is going to be team name. Great. And the attribute name is organization title. Um, all right. Let's see what that looks like. Boom. That looks way better. So we're already winning. All right. But just by doing that, we're getting all that styling that we've worked so hard on before. So now we're going to say email there and this will be email. Great. And then we're going to have password and password confirmation. So we're going to grab that password, password confirmation. So we're going to go, so let's chuck it here. Password confirmation. 
is that what we're calling it here? Password confirmation, yep. And this is now password confirmation and password. All right, get rid of that one. Chuck that there. Cool, so that's looking really good. So we do need this little guy here, 12 characters minimum. So if I'll just stick that in underneath password. Yep, so we just need to fix that. So that's all right. Um, and then autocomplete, let's see, do we have with our forms, do are we passing through that? So that's our form field. So do we have the autocomplete? We're not doing that yet. We're not supporting that. So I won't, I won't add that in right now just to keep us moving. Um, but those are all required. So we will need to fix that up. We want to add some padding on top here or some margin. So let's add that to the class here. Let's see if we can add MTA. There we go. This looks so silly. But that's okay. Now let's add in a submit button. So we're just going to go straight here, render a button component, because why not? And that, and that's going to be sign up. Let's just do this and see what happens. Oh, I just can't, I can't deal with that. I'm going to get rid of it. Just, just ruining my vibe. So there we go. We've got this sign up now. Chuck that in there. Chuck that in there. All right. Let's see what happens. We're going to go team can. So that field needs to be fixed so that it's, we need to set that type. All right, so let's do that. So luckily we've already actually set that up. So we can just go here, um, field type, and that's password field. Okay, so grab that. We want that both times. Chuck that there. So no one can see as you're typing in your passwords. There we go, perfect. So it's gonna be test team, ken at test.com, and then we're gonna go, yeah, let's use that, whatever. And then hit sign up, and let's see what happens. So actually, before I let it do anything, I don't want it to sign up just yet. So let's just do that, stop it right there. And then we're gonna say, let's just go puts params. All right, and it's like that. Now let's go, it puts, wonderful. All right, exit this guy, we don't need him. Clear, clear, all set, sign up. What do we have? So that's cool, we don't care about that, but here's our params. So we can see our organization title here, okay? So we now are getting that through, we're getting our email, we're getting our password, and I'm not sure why that's coming through. Uh, well, it's being filtered there, so we're putting it there, that's fine. Um, okay, all right, so that's all good. So now what we wanna do here is we actually want to set up the team, all right? So first things first is we need to go now and have a look, because the team slug is unique, right? So we need to go through here and have a look at our models and our teams. Uh, they're not called teams, they're called organizations. That's why my brain's not working. So here's where we're setting the slug, right? So we're setting the slug here. And now what I think we need to actually do is have a little method in here because what could happen is we could both have the, the same team name. We could both be called test team. Now that's not going to work, right? So when, you're, when we're generating these slugs automatically, I think what we need to do is we need to first try the original slug and then from there, we need to go and actually loop through until we find one. So if we hit a have a collision, we need to actually go and create and change that slug out. So let's have a look how we can do that. Okay, so to create this little loop, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here, this is gonna be called generate slug, right? And what we're doing here, so ignore this device friendly token piece, but what we're doing here is we're saying, we're gonna keep looping, we're gonna create a new token, and we're going to stop unless we can find this something with this token. So we're going to remove this to adapter, but we're going to say organization dot find by, and here we're going to have slug, and this is going to be called slug here. So we're going to stop looping unless there's a collision, and if there is a collision, we're going to go again. All right, so. What we're going to do first 
is the slug. So what we need, the first iteration of this thing is the slug will be the slug that, or the title parameterized. Sorry, this is a little bit confusing. So we need to just make sure first loop, we're going to try and use this guy. If we don't, if we can't use this guy because it's a collision, we will then loop again. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have an index of zero. Then we're going to run a loop. I'm just putting the index there. And at the moment I'm hard coding this slug so that you can see what I'm trying to achieve. Okay. We're going to break the loop unless we find the organization. So what we expect here is because we already have a team called Ken's team in the database, this loop should run infinitely. Okay, so let's give that a go. Right, because you can see, ah, it stopped, runs forever. Did 15,000 iterations in that time, all right? So that's definitely not what we want. And that'd take down our whole server. So that's not right. But the reason why I want to do this, I want to say if i is equal to zero, then we want to use self dot title dot parameterize, right? And we actually need to remove these selfs because we're not going to be able to call them like this. And this is a friendly token here. So the first run, I want to use this. I want to basically just go for, so let's call it generate uh, slug equals uh, this, okay? So we're going to initialize like that, okay? So the first run, I want it to be called slug. I'm going to try run with the, the basic one. So if you wrote Ken's team, I want to try Ken's team. Okay. If it's not the first run, that means something went basically didn't work out. We, we had a collision. We're going to inject slug, but then what we're going to do. So if the parameterize uses hyphens, yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this in here. And then we're also going to go organization dot friendly token. Okay. So we're going to append at the back. A friendly token all right so let's see what that looks like so we're gonna put a slug there and just see what we're getting and then we're gonna break slug and if we find so we got this and then we're gonna just increase the loop by one so we've got the index so we can just run that okay so let's see what this does now so we're gonna reload our console let's clear it up now we're gonna say let's go this we're gonna say organization equals organization dot new and then we're gonna say title is Ken's team, right? And then if we say organization.generate slug, let's see what happens. Um, do we reload this? Generate slug called for organization ID nil. It's a private method. So that can only be called by a private thing. So let's go here. Um, I wonder if we should move that up. We could probably just leave it here. So let's just go here. We're going to just say generate slug. So basically it'll be self dot slug or generate slug. No, we're going to always generate self and this will be self dot slug or self dot parameter. So if you've provided one, we're going to try and create it with that. If not, we're going to just append to it. Okay, so that's pretty good. So here we go. So let's go reload. So now we're going to say here organization.new. And what we can do here even is if we just go organization.create and we're going to say title. And what we're trying to do here is create a collision, right? So if we just go here now, you can see there is Ken's team already. If I hit create, you can now see down here there was obviously a collision, so it looked at, it tried to find it. So it first ran with Ken's team, obviously found that, then it ran again, right? And then created this little thing. And I was like, okay, look that up. There was nothing. So now when we refresh, we get this little appended piece here. So there's no collision, right? So because slugs have to be unique. Now, what we can do as well is just test our logic and we can say, okay, this is not Ken's team. This is Greg's team. What we expect now is that that should create it instantly. There should be no collision, right? So if we now look, create Greg's team, it ran that once, it spat it out, and you can see the slug is Greg's team. So that had no collision, all right? So that was perfect. Sweet, so we've got that working. So we can take away this puts now. We don't need that anymore. We can get rid of that. 
All right, so this is our generate slug method. This piece here, this friendly token, we can actually move that away later. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it in here until we need to use it again. And then the only other piece we need to try is if we've got a team, so this is gonna be master team. And now I provide a slug of a custom slug. I want this to save a custom slug. Let's see if that works. Hit create, there we go, custom slug. So it never ran it through the generate. Try it one more time. And now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go again. I wanna create it with a custom slug, but someone else has taken that. Hit enter. That's now got a roll back and that has set it. So let's see, it's in self slug. I wonder why that actually rolled back. This is probably rolling back because Rails is checking the uniqueness here, right? So that's actually preventing us from being created. So if we remove that and then hit create, you can see that it automatically appended as well. So we can just leave the Rails check in there. So that will when someone hits save, I'll say, hey, slug's taken. Cool, whatever, that's all good. All right, so now we're generating slugs and we can now create the organization, all right? so. Let's get rid of the close this guy. And now we can jump in here. And now what we can say is user dot, so it'll be user dot default organization will be equal to organization dot new. And then we're gonna say title is equal to params. Now remember we got our params up here, so it'll be params and that will just be called, where are you, organization title. All right, so that should set that. And then hopefully that will actually create that for us. We do have to double check that though. Realistically, we don't actually have to do that though. We can actually say organizations users. We might have to do something a bit different here because we need to actually create the organization as well as the, the join table. So that we can put that on, that on hold. This is gonna be a to do. We'll do this in another video. So I'm gonna close that off. All right, and then what we can do here finally is just save this thing, all right? Because we do need to create the, the team. So they do need to belong to an organization for any of this to work. And then they can create a project, that's fine. And they can create a channel. So we'll ask them to create a channel and we'll ask them to create a project, all right? Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So that should now create our user. So let's go here and if we just say sign up, there we go. We're now logged in and we need to actually redirect them, whoopsie, to the projects root. Once signed in, see that it was signed in and now they can go to all their things. So they can go to their ideas and go from there. So we've got the sign in page looking pretty good. So we go sessions, I'll log out and now we've got why, uh, sign up. That's what we've just done. Yep, sign up. All right. So that's just quickly setting up the um, sign up page and we set up, also set up the organization slug creation and we've set up the form here using all our helpers. All right, before we go, I couldn't, couldn't just leave us hanging. I wanna just show you a little, little trick that you can do here. So with Rails, in the model, active record, you can say accepts nested attributes for organizations. So what this means is when we create a user we can pass in attributes for the organization that we wanna create and Rails will automatically do that for us. And because it's smart enough here, because organizations is through organizations user, it will actually create that table for us as well. Now, this is what it looks like, right? So I'll just show you here. We're gonna tab this out. You can see, so we've got user, we've got the email, we've got the part, the word, the password confirmation, and then we've got organizations, and then you go underscore attributes. Because it has many, it's an array, and then we're passing, now this is organization attributes. So this is, the, we're just gonna pass in the title, right? And that's what's gonna happen. So the way we're gonna now do this in our controller, in our registration, it's a little to-do here, that's what's bothering me. We're gonna say user, dot organization attributes, right? So the same thing here. And then we're gonna say it's an array. And inside that array, it has a title. And what we're doing here is params organization title, all right? And that's what we're getting from the front end. And now all we need to do is save this user and that will automatically 
create the organization, create the join, as well as create the user all in one hit. We don't have to worry about any of that. Now we're not gonna redirect to the root path. We saw that, that's not where we wanna go. We actually wanna go to, ah, where are we gonna go? We're gonna go, so once we've created a user, the first place we wanna land them is probably, I think we wanna set up a channel. All right, so that'll be channels path, all right? Welcome, you've signed up successfully. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. So let's give this a go. I haven't, this is untested. So, so this is gonna go Gorilla Mind. It's the team name. And let's be gorillas at email.com. You can fast forward through all this. All right, then we're gonna hit sign up now. Let's just pull up our console, make sure that everything is going okay. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. And sign up. All right, there we go. So that happened. What happened? Created the user, created the organization, and then it created the organization's users table as well. So created that join, is owner, is admin, is default. We do need to update that so that it actually does default that. So we will need to fix that one up. So what we could even, yeah, yeah, so that's all good. So that's all good for now. But now we've actually signed them up and we've created their team and we've created and set everything ready for them to go. All right, so that's what I wanted to just quickly jump in and show you before we end the video. All right, thank you so much. Catch you on the next one.